Like criminals on an FBI list, some of their names will be familiar. The 20 least wanted list of invasive plants in northwest lower Michigan. Invasive plants, animals, and other organisms are called invasive species when they are not native to the ecosystems of our region and are likely to cause real economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. This video is about a really fast-growing invasive plant called Japanese knotweed and what's being done to fight the invader in the Manistee City area. Here's Katie Grishek, coordinator of the Northwest Michigan Invasive Species Network. Japanese knotweed is an invasive species, which means it's not native to the United States. I um, mean, it also causes harm to the environment and to our infrastructure, to our roads, to our buildings, um, because it's able to bust right through those foundations. Uh, one of the biggest problems with Japanese knotweed is that it's actually able to spread not only by seed, but also by fragments. So if you mow or cut uh, the Japanese knotweed and then throw it in a compost pile, for example, even a piece as big as just an inch long can grow into a whole new plant. One of the other issues is climate change. Um, as the temperature increases, as our winters get less severe overall, um, Japanese knotweed has a bit of a competitive advantage. It's able to stay growing a little longer, put more resources down into its roots. And when the frosts don't kill it back, because you know it doesn't frost till later, it's able to grow even longer. And if that little fragment, which might have died otherwise, then doesn't die because the frost didn't come yet and is able to put down roots and save itself, um, Japanese knotweed is going to continue to just keep growing and growing and growing. We found that the most effective way to control Japanese knotweed is using herbicides. Crew chief Fields Ratliff says they have a short time frame to get out and chemically treat knotweed throughout the area. Um, today we're doing a, a chemical application of Japanese knotweed, which is the most effective. Um, it's a foliar spray using um, a pump backpack sprayer to mist and cover the leaves of the plant. That's 90% that's of what we do, but we also do a, a cut stump application for um, areas where the, the plant might be by sensitive trees, uh, shrubs, whatever. We, we cut it off, lay it down, and then we fill the, the stump with the product. And that goes down in the roots and kills it, and it also we don't have to worry about getting the foliar spray on, on other sensitive uh, plants. We had a lot of folks from throughout Manistee County saying, hey, what about Veterans Oak Grove Drive? What about, I know where, if you want Japanese knotweed, I know where there's tons of it, let's head over there. But unfortunately, it's too big of, um, of a population for us to hit before. But with this new grant from the Michigan Invasive Species Grant Program, we have the funds now to be able to do that. So we've been working with everybody from private landowners all the way up to the city of Manistee that owns some land there and, and does some of the roadside management. Jeff McCoola is the director of public works for the city of Manistee. He knows that fighting off this invader needs to be a real cooperative effort. Uh, this plan has encroached into the roadway, hanging over. Uh, we try to trim it back. It comes right back bigger and nastier than ever. Uh, we've also seen that it pokes up through the asphalt, um, and so it's very destructive to the infrastructure. Um, it's grown not just in the right-of-ways, but it's grown beyond the right-of-ways onto the private property. So even if the city took this on by itself to uh, handle what's in our right-of-way, there still had to be some efforts with the adjoining you know, property owners. So we're very pleased that that's being coordinated and happening now. Manistee resident Mary Hurley and her neighbors recognized the threat from knotweed a few years ago and helped bring the invasive species network to the city of Manistee. Prior to this, our main control or our concern had been Phragmites, which we all know about, and we know, and it, we see it around the water features all around us, as well as in the drainage ditches on the road, and we had seen it here along Veterans Drive, um, thinking that that was the, you know, the, the evil weed to be eradicated, and about two or three years ago, um, all of a sudden it started being replaced by this, this plant, um, which we now know is, you know, the Japanese knotweed. And so um, we really are happy to see that the city is taking part in it because we feel like it's coming to us from this area along Veterans Drive. And, and while we've already started treating it through, you know, with the help of the species, Invasive Species Network, um, we know that if we eradicate it on our property and it's not eradicated here, it's not going to do us a lot of good. The most effective way of getting rid of this invasive species is through chemical treatment. Um, so I think in order to be safe, not just for our workers, but for the public as well, 
Um, I appreciate that there are trained people that are coming out applying that. Anywhere a person is who would happen to notice this plant and knowing how, how invasive it is and how damaging it can be, that you find your local office, um, you know, which are available on all the government websites, to find someone to come out and help you eradicate it.